Okay, this one now I'm gonna. We've had a couple different variations there, and here's number three. We'll go political on this one. So these are just being banged off one, two, three. Uh, I'll probably put them in there as one, two, three, and um, no retakes. So this is just how I do these, and I know a lot of people probably say, "Oh man, you should retake it. What are you doing?" But um, I don't know. I believe in the real now and and uh, the brain working it out as as I say whatever I'm going to say. So on the politics, I do want to give a shout out to how well um, the politicians are doing with this COVID-19. Um, the effort, the daily effort, I can see the strain on their faces and sometimes there's a strain in their voices and and maybe on a side note, they, they should try to take a step back and register that in some ways they're getting to overtired and they're winding themselves up. That said, they're, they're working so well and they're doing so well. And uh, you might say, oh, you're, you must be a liberal. I'm not, actually. I think I think I'd voted strategic this time. And then, so that was um, Chet Meet Singh. But I think the time before that would have been probably Harper because I wasn't sure about Trudeau when he first came on. And then um, I have to admit, I was really disappointed there couple years back when he was having the problems with you know trying to favor a company that was in his riding and uh, not really following the rule of law interfering with it and now trying to tell all of us we need to follow the rule of law Canada's a country of the rule of law all that stuff really kind of nauseated me but right now I'm actually thinking he's growing into his job and he's doing a pretty good job of it um, Freeland though would be my choice to run that party and run our country I Boy, uh, if she doesn't get burnt out from first the negotiations with the states and now basically, um, you know, a, a point person on, on handling this COVID-19 outbreak, I mean, like, you know, hats off to you. Um, it's amazing the, it's when you need the right person, sometimes they show up at the right time. Oh, a little choke there, eh? <laughs> I, 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 um, I respect people that are... Um, you know, have that much heart and, and brains. You gotta have some brains to do this too. Like, um, so that's actually, I'll move along to that. Like, the one thing they probably need to do is start listening to more business people. Pull a Jimmy Patterson, it was from BC here, I'm from BC. But, you know, pull someone from back east that, that understands business and dealing with business people. You're, you're not really dealing with the United States. I know you want to say you're dealing with and you're talking to Trump's people around him. If you're talking to politicians around him, that's not really going to get through to him because he still doesn't see things politically. He sees it from a business point of view. He sees it from actually, sadly, a, a greed point of view. For like, he's very greedy for himself and his family, and so he, he's always looking at the money and stuff. Um, typical was just a couple of days ago where you know he sits there, kind of rocking side to side with his hands by his side because he can't stand not being the one at the microphone. And for a while there, you know, people were asking questions uh, of their head medical person. And he's saying, you know, well, we, you know, we have to stay separate. We have to, you know, to, we have to you know, have that two meters. And, and, you know, we need to get going on that. We need to focus on that. We need to do that. And then we have a chance to, you know, lessen the, the deaths that are going to happen in the States. And then, you know, Trump's kind of doing his naughty thing, like sort of agree. Then he gets up there, he goes, yes, yes, you know, we need to do that. And then the next words out of his mouth are, but we need to open the country back up. I mean, we need to open it up. We're, we're not designed this way. We're not, we're not making money this way. So he mixed messages his own people that he just had up there and authorities that actually are trying to do the right thing. And sadly, a lot of this crunch on all of us and our jobs and our wages does go back to the fact that, uh, I don't know the exact number. I'm gonna say a number I heard, but I don't know if it's correct, 874 million. So not even a billion to three trillion towards, you know, preventing nuclear wars and, and, and big wars and stuff like that. So so the money has been spent over the years since, this, I'm talking about since 2005 when Bill Gates gave his talk about the Ebola crisis and that we need to, that was a, you know, a warning shot across our bow, let's get prepared for this, what's happening today. Of course we didn't, we spent so little money on that. We're not talking to states because these were numbers on the states, but that's how little they spent towards preparation and uh, towards, you know, uh, uh, an outbreak of a virus versus, you know, um, maybe a nuclear war with Russia or China or something. So, like, 
I'm not seeing, you know, I don't actually think that we spend that much money to begin with on the arms because there's just a lot of money being filtered off, a lot of people getting rich on that. But regardless of that, definitely there's got to be some sort of balance because this is a major tragedy. And now, um, as of today, it just is, I don't know if I said it, it's April, still on April 7th, 2020. Um, today we know that, you know, he's, he's blocking masks that we had pre-ordered and were made for us and he's dropped, stopped them at the border and he's bringing in laws saying we can't have them. Well, it kind of sucks because if they had prepped themselves, they wouldn't have to steal from our orders where we had, you know, planned a little better than them. And to be honest, they wouldn't have those because a lot of the reason that big order was prepared was because we had ordered it. We saw the writing on the wall and we put an order in and they said they could deliver on it as quickly as possible. And we would actually had it close, but just timely for Ontario because they're down to a couple of days. And now they're, you know, blocking 5 million masks and they're going to keep them themselves. But they wouldn't have had them because they didn't put an order in. <laughs> they, they wouldn't have made them for them. So they're really, they're, they're stealing from us our order. And, you know, puts a company in a bad spot because they're obviously not honoring their orders. So, you know, why should we in the future order from them? And it sounds like Ontario won't be. They'll create their own stockpile. And so overall, this is going to damage in the future 3M. Next outbreak comes around there. Not everyone's going to be going to them because guess what? It's not that you're not trustworthy, but you don't have the power to send your orders. So they can be blocked uh, to, to give, be fair to them. Uh, three, three hours company, but still to be fair to them, it sounds like they did want us to get our order. They did want to serve to people that had thought to order. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this one. It's points over the five minutes. So I think I'll stop here and then I'll probably continue on this line of thought on the politics. But again, a shout out to our leaders. I and actually shout out to all the first responders. Uh, shout out to all the medical people. Um, I was at, one of my three jobs was a was a truck driver, and so up until a couple of weeks ago, I was still delivering stuff. Turns out that last week I probably shouldn't have worked because it was such reduced hours. So many of our um, were B two B businesses. Uh, so many were closed, and I barely got any hours. But that meant that I got some hours, which means I don't get to qualify till this weekend. Instead of actually. For the amount of hours I worked, I think it was over three days, not even 16 hours. <laughs> Less than two days of work for driving. Usually it's 10-hour days. So, um, you know, I kind of cost myself trying to help out people. But that's life. And um, hopefully if I get some money coming in, I'll be fine too. All right, uh, I'm going to stop this one here. I'm rambling. Cheers, bye.